Hello, I'm Professor Liu. Welcome to our live stream. Today we are reviewing select entries from the April Art Dare, and we're also going to announce who won the honorable mention and the prize for the April Art Dare. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class and you're stuck in quarantine, we've got everything you need here at Art Prof, critiques and tutorials. Quick reminder, today is the last day for all of you to enter the Art Prof Spring Raffle. We have so many fun prizes for you guys to win. You can donate monthly on Patreon and you can also do a one-time donation. You can do any amount you want, but if you donate $150 or more, you are gonna be in the running for a lot of cool original artwork like this gouache painting from our gouache tutorial. Or if you want to get a drawing by Lauren of her cat Tor, we also have this hilarious, weird ink drawing that I did for this live drawing session. I don't know that I'd want to live with this, but anyway, for those of you who guys are interested. But Patreon's important to you guys because Patreon is a longer term ongoing donation. And even if it's a dollar a month, it really helps us, you guys. So please consider becoming a monthly donor because we really want to make more stuff for you guys. We want to give you more live streams. We want to produce our tutorials faster. We want to have more three-person live streams, more live drawing streams. I love doing those, you guys. But right now, we're having some growing pains at Art Prof, to say the least. Our expanded reach has not caught up with our budget, and therefore I am knee-deep in spreadsheets and emails when really I need to be focusing on the content. So there's a limit to how much we can do, and if we get the budget for an expanded staff, that's gonna need more stuff for you guys. So think about donating, we would really appreciate it. And by the way, if you can't support us financially, spread the word, post something on your Instagram story today, tell people, what the Art Prof family means to you, and that's another great way to help. And if you can't do that, massage my ego. That's always helpful. I will never say no to any of that. Okay, guys, let's take a look at some of the entries. And I think what was super cool, a lot of people did what we called the Art Dare Leap which was basically this idea of doing not just one artwork, which you could, by the way, a lot of people just did one artwork and that's totally fine, but we did have a lot of people who did the leap. And so every week we challenge people to do something a little bit different. So one week, the art dare leap was to, for example, take inspiration from our home art supplies video and to think about using something in your home we also had another challenge where we had people take inspiration from other people that did the art dare. So I was super impressed because, wow, so many of you guys were super productive for the April art dare. And what we're going to show you today is that a lot of people did work in a series. And it's just so exciting to see what you guys did. OK, Ooh, I'm very excited. We got a lot of people here today in the chat who are in the stream today, like I can see Heba, I see, let's see, Nicoletta, I see Grim Honey. Okay, very cool, you guys. I'm really happy to see that you're all here. And by the way, check out the April Art Dare page on artprof.org because you can get way more information about the artists on that page. You can read statements, you can get to their links, you can see the images. We do have links listed in the video description below, but there's way more to look at on this page, and it's just really nice to see everything in one place. Oh, cool, Vicky, you're here. Very exciting, because we're going to show your work. And thank you, Amaris and Gina, for your super chats. We really appreciate your support. Okay, let's take a look at... The first artist we're going to look at is Adira Jenner from the U.S. And Adira did four pieces, and they're all really different from each other totally different theme. And I think that's a great way to experiment. And so this is a piece about growing up in a hoarding household and having a lot of unwanted things. 
And we also have this second piece, which is a really cool mixed media piece. There's paper, there's drawing, there's bubble wrap. It's a really, really great mixed media piece. And this particular piece was this image of a fish feeling helpless at home, really feeling like there's a lack of oxygen. And I think you can really see that, especially the bubble wrap, I think really does that for me, that lack of breathing. And I think of people do feel that way right now. I think that that's a natural reaction. I know I am getting mega cabin fever and I have to step outside, otherwise I go a little bit crazy. And so tell me in the chat, you guys, how are you doing in the quarantine? Because we're at a funny place, at least in the US. In the US, it's a little bit different because the timing wasn't exactly the same. But I have now been in the lockdown for almost maybe a little bit more than two months. And it's an odd time because we're not having that abrupt shift that we had earlier, but we're starting to sort of settle into a routine, but things still feel really strange. So tell me in the chat, how are you doing? How is your experience at home in the quarantine? How is that impacting you? And I just love seeing how other people approached it. Okay, so Adira also did these two other pieces, these portraits. So she did this one and this one, and this is her thinking about home as being with her husband. She took inspiration from a song by Pink Floyd called Wish You Were Here. And there's a quote from the song, which is going over the same old ground, but have we found the same old fears year after year? And Adira really wanted to talk about her fear and anxiety about how people in higher positions right now are not able to learn from the past and they're, they're not doing what they should be doing based on that experience. I mean, guys, isn't this incredible, the diversity? I mean, even these two, it's the same theme of Adira with her husband, but there's such different emotions. Like to me, this one is really bright and lively and there's this incredible surge of energy. And this one's so delicate. I mean, the figures are barely there you hardly see them. They emerge almost like ghosts, but there's such a lovely quality to this. That I really, really enjoy. Okay, let's take a look at Carlotta, who is from Germany. And so Carlotta did these two pieces. So we have this acrylic piece, and we also have this other piece, an oil pastel, although there is also sandwich wrap, which has been placed around a canvas. So let's take a look at what Carlotta was thinking about. So this is an image of Carlotta's parents' kitchen because right now Carlotta is between her parents' house and also the dormitory at her university. And so she's talking about this kitchen, the comfort and the simplicity of the memory, the clutter that was in the kitchen. And guys, great composition. Like this is really nicely done and it's challenging to do such a complicated interior space, I think a lot of people who I talk to at Art Prof are very intimidated by backgrounds. Backgrounds are not easy to do. And I just love that she tackled this. Oh, cool, Adira, you're here in the chat. Welcome, I'm so excited that some of you guys are here watching live. It's just so cool when you guys show up. Okay, and now the second piece by Carlotta has, let's see, it's got the sandwich wrap around it. It's really about these fragments of color. And guys, isn't that a beautiful layering? I mean, it, it really has that sense of memories not being super crisp and clear all the time. There's almost a fog that Carlotta created going across it. And even some of the physical aspects of the sandwich wrap on the left-hand side if you guys look carefully, there's little wrinkles in there. And I, I love the tactility of that material. And I'll tell you, so many people did their materials with mixed materials. And we got really, really cool results. Oh, you're here. I think, Carlotta, you're Art Shock. I can't remember. <laughs> Sorry. When you guys use different names across platforms, I can't remember who's who. But I think it's you. <laughs> anyway, let's see. Okay, so let's move on. Let's take a look at the next piece, which is by Kate Kristen Wong from the USA. 
this piece has so many supplies and a lot of them are not super obvious. Some of them are, but I love the way Kate really integrated the supplies. I'll tell you, mixed media is not always easy. I think a lot of people think that mixed media is always oh, so fun and easy, but it's hard to get mixed supplies to integrate well. Like oftentimes I see mixed media stuff and it's a painting with wax just stuck on and it has no relationship at all. And guys, I'm really amazed at the way Kate integrated everything because it really feels like a finished sculpture. I don't feel like any of the materials reveal themselves because you know what's super cool? So Kate explains in her artist statement, which by the way, is on the April Art Dare page. I'm not gonna go over every single bit of the statement, but you guys can look at those later. And so this piece, it's made out of boxes, junk mail, jello, candles, spray paint. And I bet you guys didn't know this, that actually the button, the round red button in the middle, that's a yogurt lid. And Kate said that when she saw the yogurt lid, it immediately made her think about a panic button. And so the concept behind her mixed media sculpture is that previously before the quarantine, she always thought about home as a very restful place, but that actually now because of the quarantine, she's starting to experience a much broader range of emotions. And you can see like the intensity of this piece. It's really, really cool. Thank you HM for the $5 donation on PayPal. Really appreciate you guys supporting us because you guys are art prof, okay? I know it sometimes feels, okay, I'm technically the art prof and I have teaching artists and this whole staff that helps out, but when it comes down to it, this is about you guys, okay? It's not about me. I'm here and I give advice and stuff like that, but you guys are way make art prof what we are. We're a family, we're a community, we're a place on the internet where people are nice and encouraging and supportive because I just love the comments, the way you guys, like Grim Honey is saying the texture is really gorgeous. Wilson is saying this is so pretty, so much texture. And Christian saying you can learn art no matter if you're a kid or an 80 year old. Yep. And we have a broad spectrum of ages into this art dare. So I'm excited to show that. Thank you for the super chat, John. John is saying art gets us through the worst. Yep, we need this more than ever, you guys. The lockdown is really hard. Jade Leaf is saying lockdown slightly lifting a little bit in Scotland can go out, go for a walk for the first time in 11 weeks. Oh my God, that's a really long time. Depends on the country. Some countries are stricter than others. Okay, let's look at the next artist who is Diana Parker from the US. And Diana did three pieces. This one is a linoleum block print, and this one is actually a collage. And then we have another version of the cookies that are done with the linoleum block printmaking technique, which by the way, we do have a tutorial. So if you guys like the way Diana did her linoleum block print and you wanna try this out yourself, you do need specific supplies. So you'd have to be able to order those, but it's such a beautiful, bold graphic style that I just love. I mean, being a nerdy printmaker, that's going to happen. Anyway, looking at Diana's intention, she says that home is a place where you don't have to explain yourself. So in other words, if you want to eat cookies for breakfast, you can. <laughs> I just love, I was like, geez, maybe I should do that. That sounds really good. Maybe we should all eat cookies for breakfast today. <laughs> well, if you're my kids, you're not really allowed to do that. But <laughs> Assuming you, you are somewhat of an adult, or maybe if you're a teenager, your parents aren't around and you can eat cookies for breakfast. I just love this. And you know what's so funny, you guys? What I found so interesting about this art dare is that, and you guys will see this once we get through all the entries, there are some of these that are hilarious. There are some that really, really make me laugh. And there's also some that are very sad and almost tragic. There are some that are grateful and appreciative. And I'll tell you, we've never had an art dare where people really showed such a spectrum of emotions. I mean, I'm guessing it's because of what's happening in current events right now, but I love it when you can put out a prompt that gets people to think beyond just what it looks like. Like you guys are really thinking about theme, you're thinking about your personal experience and you're engaging with the materials. 
Yeah, these are really homey. I mean, I totally want to have cookies now. <laughs> John says, I may have eaten Sour Patch Kids for breakfast this morning. I have had chocolate peanuts before because I'll tell you, chocolate peanuts, that's my quarantine food. I've been eating way too much of those. Anyway, <laughs> speaking of funny takes on the quarantine, I love these two digital images by Grim Honey, who is from Nigeria. And you can see there are two pieces. This one's called Self Celebration. And we have a second piece, which is called Selfies Galore. And I just love this because we have to get through this, okay? And sometimes humor is what will get you through this. Just watching a funny movie or a Michael Fassbender movie, that works too. But I love this take on it. So Grim Honey talks about being in self-isolation, having the opportunity to relax and slow down a little bit and thinking about the small freedoms that they are finding in confinement. And so here we see Grim <laughs> with messy hair, unshaven body, and lazing around like a queen. Like, I just think that is the coolest thing. I mean, I was like, wow, I think I want to do this one day. <laughs> like, I really deserve a day to just leave my hair looking like crap and lounging around just taking silly selfies of myself. I just think that is the coolest thing. Yeah, Christian is saying you can make caricatures for newspapers. These look great. Yeah, I mean, these are wonderful, Grim. I don't know if you typically work this way, but I really think this is a style you might want to do again because you know what's really cool about this that I like? Okay, I know obviously we're looking at the figure and the figure is a big part of the story, but don't you guys feel like the background is important too? That I feel like I know something about this woman with the flowers that she's nested in and I love these two oval shaped paintings that are on the side. Like the background to me, Grim, really, really helps this piece. You could have totally just done the figure and that would have been fine, but I just feel like it's so rich because I know something about this woman that is beyond her physical appearance. So this is really, really cool to see this. We have the next piece is by Vicky Song. Vicky is in Canada. And Vicky is eight years old, you guys. This is amazing to me that we have somebody who watches our videos, who's eight years old, and is participating in the art dares. Because honestly, when I started Art Prof, I really assumed that oh, maybe there'd be a few middle school kids that might like it. But I really thought our stuff seems a little bit too, I don't know, detail oriented for um, a really young kid. And I just thought, okay, well, high school is probably where we're really going to start to reach people, but Vicky's mom told me that she loves our videos. And I was just like, oh my God, like, I'm not kidding. Like, I'm not an emotional person most of the time, but I showed this to our staff and we were all like, <laughs> we were all like getting very choked up seeing that we could reach somebody at this age. And she did this totally on her own. So it's really, really cool. And Vicky was saying that she used to live in Asia with her family, but they moved to Canada. And so she thinks about home as being where her family is. And it's interesting how for some people, home was a physical space. And for other people, it was objects. For other people, it was a person. And then for other people, it was just a group of people. So really, really cool. And so Vicky explains that because of the quarantine, obviously, she can't go to school right now. And she really wants the pandemic to end because right now she can't go out and play with her friends and she really just wants to go back to school. So very, very cool. All right, guys, let's go to Lizette Dorr, who is from Germany. By the way, Lizette, we totally did not remember <laughs> to put you on this page. That was a glitch in communication with my staff. So Lizette, if you're watching, that was not on purpose. We just need to clean up couple things on the administrative side, but we will be adding you to the page later today. Okay, so let's look at Lizette. And Lizette, similarly to a lot of other people, did a really broad range. I mean, I feel like looking at Lizette's pieces, we almost could be looking at four artworks by four different artists. And honestly, guys, that is such a great way 
to expand your creative vocabulary as an artist because every time you guys work differently or you use a different media, it really is like learning another language. And I'll tell you, when I went to Europe, I was like, really, on average, everybody speaks four languages? I was like, oh my God, we're so lame in the US. Like a lot of people in the US only speak English. And so I feel like, wow, how much bigger is your world? Tell me in the chat, by the way, because I know some of you guys are in Europe and you're in other countries. How many languages do you speak? What languages do you speak? Because I understand Taiwanese really well. My Mandarin, uh, not so great. I can sort of get by. I used to speak Italian pretty well, but that was when I lived in Italy. So I am sort of horribly jealous of people that speak five languages fluently like you guys do in Europe, which is really, really cool. So let's take a look at, this is a beautiful sketch. It's so, I don't know, it, it makes me feel very comfortable. And this isn't even my dog. And so Lizette explains that this is her dog, Rex, and this is called My Personal King. And that Rex is the most important person, well, not person, living being in Lizette's home. And let's look at the second piece, which is called Metamorphosing. And this piece really is about fear of the virus and about the change that would occur physically if you, for example, did get the virus. We also have this piece called Secrets, which is this concept of home as a refuge. And guys, I am so amazed by the texture in this. I mean, it's so tactile. I feel like I just wanna like scoop those seeds out of that. That is just the coolest thing. And then we have this other pe person, not person. God, I'm having trouble differentiating between animals and people today for some reason. So this is a piece. And you know what's so funny, you guys? Lizette was inspired by the same Pink Floyd song that Adira was inspired by it's called i wish you were here and she's talking about how this image of the hens is demonstrating that home is where she's most happy is that funny that like two people on all different parts of the planet decided to think about the same song i just think that is so cool oh my god we have so many language oh <laughs> slapnir says i'm not even fluent in english we've got bulgarian french german italian we have Mandarin, Arabic, Turkish, German, Russian, Italian, Hindi. Oh my God, that's amazing, you guys. I, I just think that's incredible. Okay, let's take a look at the next artist who is Hiba Belkadi from Morocco. And so Hiba explains that in this drawing, which is with pastels and acrylic, that she used to live in Morocco, but now she's living in Paris and that in her home in Morocco, she used to make thrones and forts out of pillows and make stories out of it. And so she talks about how Morocco, oftentimes the way it's seen or perceived or presented, that it's usually shown as a very poor place that people tend to show more the hardships of Morocco. And so she really wanted to show the richness of the culture. And so this is actually an image of her old home back in Morocco. And she talks about how the culture. It's in the colors, it's in the food, it's in the meals. And I'll tell you, you really get that out of this piece. First of all, Hiva, oh my God, the three-point perspective. This is really good, you guys. Like so few people do three-point perspective because number one, it's hard to understand. Number two, it's just more work. I mean, you have three points. <laughs> it's much more than just doing one. And I, I love that perspective. I mean, it's really distorted and it does have that almost surreal feeling that memories can have and i do like that this piece it doesn't feel like it's happening right now it really does feel like some version of a distorted memory and i think memories can feel that way for a lot of people yeah cyber moon is saying love the pattern on the pillows the over exaggerated perspective karen is noticing the yellow trousers I love the chair that she's sitting in. I mean, that to me, like that one pattern and actually the yellow pattern in the rug as well, like that to me communicates a culture. I know that that is so specific and I love it the way you guys incorporate your backgrounds into these pieces because I'm always bugging my students at RISD. I'm like, get specific. 
don't just draw a couch, draw a couch with a particular pattern. And maybe the pattern has an association that you have personally. And so this is such a great way, I think, to sneak in something that has to do with the culture without being super blatant and obvious about it. Yeah, this is such a cool perspective. I, I just think it's great. By the way, if you missed this, we did update the April Art Dare page. So if you guys want to go there, we have all the statements. We've got all the images, the links to the artists and everything. Uh, it's sapped, Lizette Dora. I'm sorry, we didn't post you yet. We will. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's just we're trying to work out some administrative things. Oh, sorry, Heba. You're saying it's a table, not a rug. Oh, I get it now. You know what, Heba? It's totally the perspective. I think it's just a perspective so weird. And probably if you had shown like way zoomed out, we'd see it more, but it doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. You did a great job on the other areas. Okay, let's go to Jasmine. I can't pronounce his name. Is it Weigelt? I'm probably saying it wrong. Anyway, Jasmine is from Germany. And this is really cool because Jasmine really stuck with a single object for her entire series. So basically what we're looking at here, it's one object, which is her boyfriend's decorative fake plant, which is in a terrarium. And so Jasmine really interpreted home as her boyfriend's place because that's the home that she has with her boyfriend. And it was so fun, Jasmine, to see how you went about doing this because Jasmine had all these thumbnail sketches and she did many revisions. And it's so cool that every single one of these, they all have the same image, but they have such different emotions. Like this one to me, the purple one, it feels really precarious. Like it, it makes you very nervous to look at it because you, you anticipate what's gonna happen. I mean, that terrarium is not stable. <laughs> it's totally gonna fall and crash and it makes, you feel that tension, that emotional tension, which is great. Oh, Cyber Moon, apparently you're Jasmine. Very cool. Very excited to have you here. And then this one, which, which is done, by the way, with gouache and turmeric, very cool application of this yellow. It's so luminous. And this one to me feels very optimistic. Maybe these are the moments where you feel like, okay, I can get through this. This is going to be okay because I think that a lot of us right now, I mean, I'm just speaking for myself, fluctuate between optimism and pessimism. And I really like that this series shows that range. Like this is another one where you have the text that says home is where the heart is. And this one's so unusual. Like, don't you guys think it's such a great choice? You can barely see the terrarium. I mean, it's almost not there. It's just a little slice in the lower right hand corner. And there's just a little indication of the plant that's in there, but like the space feels so vast and it feels really, really empty. And so it, it's just such a different mood than the others. Yeah, people are saying in the chat, Mariama, amazing background. Art Shock says the background in the one that is falling is amazing. Yeah, and you know something, you guys, the backgrounds in Jasmine's paintings, they're not complicated, okay? A lot of people, I think, are under the assumption that if you make a background, oh, it's gotta be tables and chairs and shelves and <laughs> it doesn't. I mean, I feel like the space that Jasmine created, it's really gigantic. Like this one especially, and a lot of it has to do with the placement of the terrarium. Because I think you guys probably heard me say a lot of times, like take your object out of the middle of the page because that's everybody's first impulse. If you're not thinking about composition, you just stick it in the middle. And this one, the fact that Jasmine has stuck it all the way up in the upper left-hand corner, it opens up that space in the rest of the piece. And beautiful gouache technique. I mean, I think the gouache, it's so beautiful and luscious, but also pretty thin. I mean, the gouache to me, it doesn't look that opaque, but I think definitely, Jasmine, you're really reaping the rewards of the material. Vaporistic is saying turmeric. I wish you'd point out some notable household mediums being used that is a significant trait of the April art there and makes it more unique, really nice. Yeah, a lot of people, so one of the parts of the art dare leap was to go to the art dare page, which shows this massive chart of art supplies. And it's really fun because you can draw with so many different things that you never even thought about. Like, did you guys know that Kool-Aid 
makes really awesome watercolor. Like it's really bright pigment. It's so, so cool. Okay, let's take a look at Yukti. I'm sorry, guys, I can't pronounce any of these names. Let's just accept that I'm gonna say them all wrong. <laughs> okay, the next artist, Yukti, who is from India. And this is a representation of four fabrics from Yukti's home in India. And again, oh my God, these are all Indian words. I cannot say any of these. Angi, which is a blouse, which traveled all over. And I guess it's really, really old, like 200 years or something like that. And then there's a shawl, Odhani, which was owned by her great grandmother. And then you can see there's a belt, which is a representation of her mother. It is a showing of how her mother transitioned from her maiden home in Delhi but then eventually now is living in a married house in Mumbai. So it's about that journey from Delhi to Mumbai. And then at the bottom, we have Lohenga, which is a skirt, and that belongs to her. And so you guys should read her statement because it's in the Art Dare page. And I'm only giving you guys like a little tiny piece of what she wrote, but it's a really nice statement. And she explains in greater detail what the piece is about. And so she talks about how she's thinking about these objects, these heirlooms as visual archives and how when you move from home to home in that transport, there is this physical damage that happens to your objects. I mean, things get old and worn. Sometimes there's holes in the clothing or something like that. But also for Yukti, that wear and tear that happens to the clothing, she really was thinking about that as the emotional damage that can occur when you move places. And I just think this is such an elegant piece. And you know something, there's so many smart decisions in here. I feel like what Yukti really did well, she didn't just look at the objects as objects. I really think that, I, I suspect, I mean, I could be wrong, but I feel like Yukti really was thinking about the color relationships how the objects relate to each other. Because you guys will hear me talk about that a lot, how relationships matter more than the individual pieces. And the way that the red object, it just slides down, like it has this gorgeous elegance. But then you contrast that against the light purple object at the top. And that object feels so awkward and out of place to me. It, it feels like it's not supposed to be there. And I wonder if that's maybe almost a commentary on what's going on with the emotional damage. Baparistic is saying somehow the background, which is not plain white, adds so much more to the narrative. That's a really good point, Baparistic, because you know something? 3D artwork is so problematic for people because the experience of seeing it in person, it's so different. I mean, it depends on the piece, but you don't get any of that tactile sensation when you actually see it in person. And guys, just picture, if this was on a black background, you would not be looking at it the same way because the color relationships would totally change. Like that skirt at the bottom being on that lighter white background, it really feels ethereal. I mean, it almost feels like a ghost to me. And if you took that skirt and you put it on a black background, it would stick out too much. And all the balances and all the relationships with the colors and the forms would be really, really different. Adira is saying the shawl looks like it's failing. Interesting. Yeah, there's a real emotional weight to these objects. And Mariama is saying it's something different and very cultural that creates softness to this photograph. And Art Chalk says this has so many perspectives as a concept and also looks so engaging. Thank you so much, you guys, for your comments, by the way, because I know a lot of you guys who are in the stream are in the chat. And when you guys support each other, that's so important because I obviously am giving my opinion on these pieces, but I've had people we have featured in streams say to me, I got so much out of what other people said to me about my artwork. And I feel that that was a big part of the experience. So when you guys type things in the chat, you're helping everybody, okay? It's, it's really great to see that support. Okay, now we're going to look at Logan Morris from the US. And Logan, like a lot of other people, did a very broad range of different images, different media. So we have a, what I'm guessing is a self-portrait. It's called My Confidence. We have this one. Another section of the Art Dare Elite was to take inspiration from some of the other Art Dare artists 
and to see what they were doing and have that inspire you. And you can see the whole bunch of people in here that Logan was looking at. And really, that is a great way to learn, you guys. Look at what other people are doing. And I like the art there because we're all doing the same thing. Like, we're all thinking about the same thing. But the thing is, the way we actually express it, the way we think about it is totally different. And I get really inspired seeing all the different variations. I mean, the work in the stream is so diverse. Even other streams where you'd think it would be diverse, sometimes it isn't because people are using the same media and so it just naturally looks more similar. But this is probably one of the most diverse streams and it was the highest participation. We had over a hundred people submit. So we were just, oh my God, so excited to see that. So let's talk about Logan's piece. This first piece is drawn with highlighters. And Logan explains that these are their mother's favorite flower, tulips. And the second piece is about being confident in themselves at home. And so this is a portrait where they are wearing makeup because they, they feel that they can be confident wearing makeup in their home. So that confidence, I think, is a part of their lives. And then we looked at this one, which was getting the inspiration. And I thought it was really interesting that Logan talked in their statement about how home is not always a safe place for everybody. And I know that is more typical that people think of home as a safe place, but it's not safe for everybody. And Logan explains in the statement that they can't really imagine what that's like. And so I think you can see this is a commentary on that. I mean, that really that chokehold that the hand has on that face. And then, you know what I think is a great choice that Logan made? There's no shoulders and there's no neck because I feel like if it had a shoulders and neck, it would feel more like they were trying to draw a real person, but this feels more like a symbol of something. And, and so cool to see, this is Posca pens, but if you go back and you look at the digital piece, these two are actually somewhat similar. And so it's really cool to see how some of the stylistic choices in this one definitely translated in this one. Yeah, Fruit Lover saying, love this, it's so poetic. Nicoletta saying it's a powerful image, you can't easily forget it. Yeah, it, this is a bold image. It really almost smacks you in a face, but I think in a good way. I mean, that's a compliment. <laughs> Sometimes I say stuff like that and people are like, no, I'm like, no, I mean it as a good thing. <laughs> so anyway, let's take a look at Nicoletta T who is live in the chat with us right now. Thank you for joining us. Nicoletta is from Greece and wow, we have two very different pieces from Nicoletta. So this one is done with pencil and digital. And Nicoletta, I believe that you had a more complicated process than that, so I can't really verbalize it, but maybe you can tell people in the chat. And if you look at the second image that Nicoletta did, oh my God, you guys, this was such a process. So basically, Nicoletta looked at our home art supplies chart, and Nicoletta, you should tell everybody what you use, because you bought cabbage and you squeezed it and you boiled things. And I think you had beet at one point. You had so many supplies that you used to make the colors and you actually made your own cut paper collage, which is different. Cause I think a lot of people, when they make collage, they think about magazines, but you can see all the colors and the shapes that Nicoletta has in this piece. They're all from her playing with the home art supplies. And if you guys take a look on artprof.org, we do have this technique, painted paper collage, which is basically what Nicoletta did, which was you take sheets of paper, you paint them, you can control the different patterns. And so Nicoletta talks in her statement about how for home, it's feeling comfort, feeling safe. And wow, is this true, Nicoletta, that you um, moved 20 times? <laughs> I was looking at that, I was like, oh my God, that's a lot. And she's talking about how books to her are really essential, a big part of the home. And I, I love the surreal feeling of this, guys. The color scheme is so specific and the dynamic quality of the books. It, it's just got a great atmosphere. And oh my God, you guys, the couch on the left. I know it's easy to look at the books because the books are brighter and you're gonna be more attracted to them. But on the left-hand side, oh my God, that couch is so three-dimensional. Like it really, you believe it as an object. 
Veronica is saying, how do I join and do these artworks as well? So what I would do is you want to head over to artprof.org. And if you click on the link that says Art Dares, we actually already have posted the one for June. So if you guys want a little preview, <laughs> you can go in there. But we are going to have a video that announces how to do that. But go there and we have information. You can also sign up for the email list. So for the email list, what we do is we send out one email once a month, the, usually the second day of the month, and then you can get a notification for how to do that. Okay, let's, let's see. Oh, Nicoletta says she used coffee, red cabbage, turmeric, red Easter egg dye. Good for you, Nicoletta. I mean, you worked so hard on this piece and you considered everything. It's just a really finished, lovely artwork. Okay, let's look at Millie. I don't know if I'm saying this right. Millie Santos from Puerto Rico. And like a lot of other people, oh my God, Millie, you were so productive. And every single one of these pieces, as I see, they're so different. And it's really fun because if you look at Millie's pieces, they are made out of photographs, pencils, markers, and pens. And I really enjoy the integration of that because I don't think photos are always the easiest thing to integrate. I think because oftentimes they're so literal in terms of the images, but like, I love this one made with turmeric and beets and this one's such a different feeling. And yet they do all have a mysterious quality to them that I think gets you very curious. Like, like these are not pieces that you understand immediately, although this one may be <laughs> American Vodka, My New Home. I mean, I suppose part of that is the text really explaining that to us. But also this one, the way the photographs are lined up and then this jumble of shapes over here on the left-hand side. I mean, some of you guys were really productive this week, this month, and I hope you guys are seeing what it's like to stick with something for a longer period of time because actually we do have a stream coming up next month where we are going to talk about how to make a series of artworks because I know a lot of people are itching to do that make something a little more focused that maybe feels like a more mature developed body of work and I really feel like this art dare was the beginning of that it was a great experience for a lot of people so really really fun yeah, Art Shock is saying the two faces blending into each other is so cool. And Sterling is saying what an ethereal quality. Yeah, and so Millie, if you read her artist statement, she talks about how returning back to drawing felt really good, really therapeutic, and that actually the process of making these pieces felt therapeutic to her. And so she was thinking about home as really the people in her personal networks and thinking about really projecting herself as a human, any human, an individual who is existing during the pandemic. And I do think that with the pandemic, I think people really are trying to feel some degree of solidarity despite all the chaos that's going on. And so I love that message that's happening. Adira is saying, the art dare helped me get motivated again after feeling really overwhelmed. Yeah, I think I think you might have been the person you were saying that you felt like you were in a creative rut. And it's hard to get out of that because once you get yourself in that hole, it's hard to dig yourself out. And I mean, honestly, for me, I just need someone to light a fire under my butt so I get off and <laughs> do something. But that's what I do like about the art dares is that there is a set deadline. And so, you know, you have to do it within that time frame because you could do a project, but it's like, oh, when's it due? I have no idea. So sometimes deadlines can actually be a good thing, even though I know students, <laughs> you guys don't like them. That's okay. I get it. I totally get it. Guys, we had an art class do the art dare. And so this is from art teacher Ross Hines. And this is a school, Hebron ninth grade campus from Carrollton, Texas. And oh my goodness, Ross had to transition to remote teaching. As you know, a lot of teachers, including myself, I mean, I had to teach my RISD class remotely this semester. And so Ross really was up against, I think, a lot of major challenges that honestly, most of us have never had to deal before. I mean, I've taught in so many places in so many different formats, but there's nothing has ever been like this. 
And especially, I mean, Ross has big classes. And one of the biggest challenges that he said was just the art supplies. I mean, that's such a logistical thing. And I know a lot of people are really concerned about, well, how do I teach? I'm like, yeah, but they don't have supplies. <laughs> so what do you do if you don't have the supplies? And I think that a lot of people have been trying out a lot of different options and it, there really is not any clear solution to any of that. And so these are drawings from Ross's advanced two drawing class. And these are all images that Ross's students sent to him remotely. Usually Ross told me that he shoots the photographs for the students themselves because they're at school and it's a lot easier that way. But wow, I mean, the fact that Ross is really getting these kids to step up and do something, it's hard. I mean, I've been communicating with a lot of teachers and you do have to track students down. A lot of students are harder to reach. Some students are struggling with internet problems. Other people, as Logan said earlier, home is not a safe place. And home is sometimes less safe than school for a lot of people. So it's definitely something to concern. Yeah, Alice DB, I love how so many students define their home so differently. You can really see it. I mean, even stylistically in the mood, it really shifts from piece to piece. Really, really fun. Okay, you guys ready? We're going to announce now who got the honorable mention. Goes to Kate Kristen Wong for her mixed media piece, Panic Button. I think you guys know this is a really amazing piece. It's bold, it's brash, and it leaps off the wall and it conveys those emotions. And what an amazing engagement with the material, Kate. And so we, as the staff, we were so surprised by this piece. And, and by the way, you guys, number one, we had so many submissions. We had over 100. And this, this was not an easy call for us. Usually we'll do like one pass, maybe two, and then we'll know pretty quickly who won. But this one was not like that. This one was like multiple rounds. And I remember I was like, guys, at some point we got to whittle it down. And so th this is not so much like something is better than the other. It's just like, oh my God, we had, to, we had so much to choose from. It was really, really tricky to do that. Nikki is signing in from the UK. You've no idea how long I've been watching Art Prof and doodling today. Art Prof Saturday. Very cool. Yeah, we wanted to switch our weekend streams to 12 o'clock p.m. because I guess our European crowd was bumming <laughs> that they couldn't watch us live. So for June, just for information, on the weekends, we're going to stream at 12 o'clock p.m. And on weekdays, we're going to do 10 o'clock p.m. And this is all Eastern Standard Time. The one exception is the Art Prof graduation. That's a little bit different because it's a separate event. Okay, you guys ready to see who won the prize? The prize goes to Yupti from India for her piece that has the family heirlooms. We just loved the interpretation of this piece. We just thought it was so unusual and different. And here's the thing, you guys. I would have to say in terms of submissions for YouTube critiques, a lot of the stuff we get is paintings. We get tons of drawings. We get a lot of portrait paintings, actually. That's probably the most popular genre. And so we really are trying to push people outside of just the straight painting and to try different things with objects and mixed media and to think about things less literally, I think. And we just thought this concept of the visual archives expressed through the clothing, the damage, the emotional damage that happens through transport. We were just blown away by the concept, by the representation. It's such an elegant, gorgeous piece. And so we were really excited about this. But that said, this was not an easy decision for us. It was really hard, actually. I mean, we're in Slack. We're like, come on, we got to pick one. You guys can't sit here forever. Thank you for the super chat, 10,000 crows. You are amazing. Thank you so much, you guys. All right, you guys, don't forget spring raffle. Today's the day. And guys, we really need this. We really, really do. I love working on our prof, but the administrative tasks are killing me right now. And I can't keep this up forever. And there's so many things that I want to do for you guys. So please support us. If you can't support us, spread the word, tell people what's going on, subscribe to our channel and join the Art Prof family. And here's your chance, you guys, to be on this slide because if you become a top Patreon supporter, 
this is one of the rewards. We have lots of rewards on Patreon that are beyond the raffle rewards. And we're so happy to see this list getting bigger, but we could use more. We always could use your support. So everybody, thank you so much. Adira is asking, do you enter the raffle from Patreon? What I would recommend you guys do, go to artprof.org, just the front page, it's right there. Spring raffle, click on that. If you do one-time donation, it's through PayPal. But if you do monthly donation, that's through Patreon. So I have all the links and all the buttons. And by the way, if you guys want to send me snail mail, you can do that too. If you want to write out a check, just write it out to me. And I do have the snail mail address on the raffle page. So that will be another option for those of you guys who want to do it. Because you know what? I've got some really nice handwritten notes that just, oh my God, were so incredible. So snail mail is great too, but Patreon and PayPal work as well. And so anyway, guys, thank you so much. Please think about the raffle. Thank you to all the wonderful artists who participated in the art door. Not just the people that were in this video, but just anybody who participates. It's a community. It's a place for us to connect with each other. Everybody, please stay safe. 